friends in this video let's discuss about biogeochemical cycles okay this is in introductory part of this uh, biogeochemical cycle topic so what are biogeochemical cycles a biogeochemical cycle is a pathway by which the chemical substances moves through both biotic and abiotic components of the earth okay here it is a pathway okay it it follows a particular path where the nutrients moves from both biotic and abiotic components of earth okay biotic components include living component and abiotic components include non living uh, component of the uh, ecosystem that is lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere okay and what why do we call this a cycle that means cycle is a series of change which comes back to the starting point which can be repeated okay here in water cycle what happens uh, it is a series of change okay it comes back to the starting point where it, it it can be repeated here the water falls to the earth in the form of rain okay and after reaching the earth it it it, it moves in the form of groundwater dis discharge or runoff uh, into the ocean where it it again gets evaporated uh, evaporated and then it get con condensed in the atmosphere itself okay it condenses atmosphere and then it comes back to the earth in the form of rain so this is a cycle okay this is same for all the biogeochemical cycles so before going in detail towards the biogeochemical cycle let's distinguish between the energy flow and nutrient cycling okay these two are the important functions of the ecosystem so for 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 for, for in detail about the important functions of ecosystem please visit my uh, previous videos okay this energy flow and nutrient cycling and trophic levels are all the important functions of the ecosystem so in energy flow what happens is that the energy is fixed by the uh, by by the plants that is autotrophs uh, with the help of uh, sunlight okay they fix energy in the form of uh, stored food materials like carbohydrates and this energy is utilized by the primary producers sorry primary consumers like uh, rabbit deer okay grasshoppers and this energy will be moved to the next trophic level by way of uh, uh, food chain that is way of eaten and being eaten through a series okay so in this in the, in the in the process the energy is lost lost in the form of heat okay at, as i discussed in a previous video so from producer to the top carnivore that is through through the food food chain the energy is continuously being lost in the form of heat okay uh, totally very less energy is available to the tertiary consumer but it is not the case in this in this uh, nutrient cycling okay uh, in nutrients like cycling all the nutrients like uh, carbon hydrogen oxygen uh, uh, nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur these nutrients uh, goes on continuously uh, cycling okay uh, it it goes on repeating the process of cycle it is not get lost so it it continuously repeating itself uh, through both uh, uh, entering both biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem that is living component and non living component for example the oxygen that we breathe today might have used by our ancestors uh, thousands of thousands of years ago and the same oxygen will be utilized by our uh, future generations without any modification so in this way in energy flow the energy is lost in the form of heat okay it's totally lost in the form of heat but in nutrient cycling it will be recycled again and again without any loss this is the major difference between energy flow and nutrient cycling and next thing is these nutrients okay by the chemicals involved in biogeochemical cycle the important these important of these are carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus these are very much important for the living beings for continuing their life because these five important elements constitute about 97% of the body weight of the living organisms so carbon we 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 need carbon for uh, development of proteins and uh, uh, dna rna and all the important components of the living organisms hydrogen it is important component of water and oxygen we need oxygen for breathing nitrogen is an important component of uh, uh, this one uh, proteins and amino acids these are all very much essential for for the life on earth and all these components are very much important so this biogeochemical cycle has very much significance in our ecosystem and sustaining the living living beings on the earth okay so this nutrient cycles okay uh, 
this nutrient cycles move from both living to the non living things that is biotic to the biotic abiotic components by way of cycling okay and this cycling must be stable and balanced balanced in order to in order to sustain the life for example uh, because because of the instability in the carbon cycle we are seeing uh, we are witnessing uh, the climate change global warming and other deleterious effects on the ecosystem so it must be stable and balanced uh, to sustain life on the earth okay and here the most important characteristic is the specific nutrients like carbon hydrogen oxygen uh, nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur and these nutrients follows a particular pattern of cycling each of these nutrients has its own specific pattern of cycling in the atmosphere as well as uh, moving through biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem so they have specific pattern and we can divide we can classify nutrient cycling into two types one is perfect cycle and another one is imperfect cycle here in perfect cycle uh, the nutrients nutrients goes through a perfect cycling okay uh, it, it, as in the case of water cycle that i discussed so here uh, it, it it will be a perfect cycle okay uh, the examples of these include carbon hydrogen oxygen cycle okay and imperfect cycle here in imperfect cycle uh, the nutrients do not complete a perfect cycle in the ecosystem that means uh, from uh, while interacting with both biotic and abiotic components some of the nutrient here are fixed or accumulated in the earth's crust in the form of sedimentary deposits okay it will not be available for further cycling okay uh, so this is called imperfect cycle for example uh, phosphorus and sulfur these nutrients will be fixed in the form of a, a sedimentary deposit uh, below the ocean and earth's crust so this will be available only uh, after millions of years by way of uh, uh, upliftment but of the earth by geomorphological processes so this is called imperfect cycle because some of the uh, elements are not available for cycling for immediate effect okay this is imperfect cycle so these two types perfect and imperfect so on the basis of nature of reservoir that is nature of origin of these elements we can classify this into gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle okay gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle in gaseous cycle we come across the water cycle that means hydrogen cycle oxygen cycle and nitrogen cycle and here these elements has the their origin as atmosphere for example oxygen the source of oxygen is the atmosphere so this is called oxygen cycle same is the case for nitrogen and hydrogen so the basic source for these elements is the atmosphere hence it is called as gaseous cycle in sedimentary cycle the primary source for these elements that is phosphorus and sulfur is the sedimentary deposits on the earth's crust as well as the oceans so hence it is called as sedimentary cycle here the please important note this uh, here the primary source is not the atmosphere for phosphorus and for sulfur it is the sedimentary deposits on the earth so this is important uh, the classification that is gaseous cycle and the sedimentary cycles thanks you thanks for watching uh, please uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, in, in 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 my next video i will cover uh, carbon and uh, uh, water cycle uh, please click here for previous videos related to uh, environment and ecology thank you